After becoming a public corporation in 2004, DreamWorks Animation, under the leadership of Jeffrey Katzenberg, continued to expand its footprint on the entertainment landscape, spawning a number of new franchises and cementing themselves as an animation powerhouse. By the early 2010s, DreamWorks was well and truly pumping out more content than before, with every single year now offering at least two features. With Katzenberg still at the helm, the period between 2011 and 2015 became a bit of a mixed bag, heavily focused on sequels and spin-offs with very little attention put into originals. While these IP-focused films mostly performed very well, critically and commercially, it was the original titles that saw the studio offer a string of commercial flops, though one, The Croods, would spawn yet another lucrative franchise. While it may be a little harsh to call this era DreamWorks's Dark Age, offering such classics as Kung Fu Panda 2, Puss in Boots, Rise of the Guardians, How to Train Your Dragon 2 and The Croods, the mixed nature of the period certainly led to an overhaul of the studio's creative output in the following years, making it the closest to a Dark Age that the studio has had. In this video we'll look at DreamWorks Animation's commercially successful yet critically mixed third era, spanning the studio's 10 features between 2011 and 2015. I'll break down each of the movies as I rank them in order of my own personal preference from least to most favourite. At that, this is my ranking of DreamWorks Animation's third era. Kicking us off at number 10, Home. Home focuses on a race of intentionally annoying aliens, with the lead character, O, meant to be the most annoying of all. While this is supposed to be cute and endearing, it's simply just annoying. Adding to the annoyance is Sheldon himself, Jim Parsons, lending his trademark unfunny, irritatingly wacky style to the role. However, this is the least of the movie's troubles, as these happy aliens launch a friendly invasion of Earth and throw all humans into friendly concentration camps. Somehow we are expected to sympathise with these annoying megalomaniacs. Home tries to make big statements, but fails. It's all been done before, but better and more tastefully. With stupid characters and a shallow plot, home is a complete mess. 9. Penguins of Madagascar the Penguins with their quick sight gags, funny quips and great puns, and there are some fun ones here, are enjoyable in moderation. In the Madagascar movies they fulfil their duty as comedic relief and never outstay their welcome. However, this movie takes side gag and stretches it into an infuriatingly annoying full 90 minutes. Add on top a bonkers plot where they become global spies, saving the world from a mad scientist squid, then become mutants and then superheroes, and it's obvious this once cute franchise about animals escaping a zoo has totally jumped the shark. No, this movie doesn't take itself too seriously and it earns points for that, but that can't be used as a get out of jail free card to excuse this poorly executed and stupidly obnoxious grab for cash. 8. Turbo much like its titular character, Turbo fights for dear life to become something special, but unlike its title character, fails spectacularly. It's a movie with a ludicrous premise, which perhaps could have worked in better hands. Though soon following Pixar classics like Cars and Ratatouille, it feels like a cheap imitation and, pardon the pun, an empty shell. Lacking their heart, prowess and charisma, it instead only succeeds at being a dull, annoying and and obnoxious movie with humour that never once hits its mark. Despite a great voice cast, it also fails to do much interesting, exciting or likeable with its characters, leaving little for audiences to cheer for except decent animation. 7. Mr Peabody and Sherman the inaugural film in a proposed Rocky and Bullwinkle cinematic universe, this was perhaps not the best place to start. Though it's a high octane emotional thrill ride through time with exciting moments, bursting colours and a fantastic exploration of father-son relationships, its reliance on a 50 year old long dormant property was its Achilles heel. While it's fun to see characters exploring different timelines and altering historical events, a lot of it in including the characters themselves, is lost on younger audiences, and original audiences are neglected by an overloaded narrative that muddles the charm and simplicity that made the original cartoons so wonderful. It's also not a terrific adaptation, but it's a well-intentioned, perfectly harmless little movie. 6. 
Puss in Boots. Though it has a decent premise, great pulpy action-adventure vibes, exciting western-infused set pieces, some of the most gorgeous visuals in a DreamWorks flick, and is led by one of Shrek's greatest characters, the movie is unfortunately held back by a meandering, simplistic plot and an incredibly young demographic. With an over-reliance on nursery rhyme characters, it feels incredibly kiddie, and as a result, humour is stunted, offering very few adult laughs. Regardless, it's fun to see Puss's origin and we do get some good new characters. With enormous potential to be a great, bombastic fantasy epic, it leaves a lot to be desired. 5. Madagascar 3 – Europe's Most Wanted Easily the most boisterous and outrageous Madagascar entry, Europe's Most Wanted is such a hugely outlandish adventure that it doesn't quite feel like it fits with the previous two entries. While story expansion is always welcome, taking the characters on a European romp with various ill-developed side quests is such a huge departure that this sequel feels somewhat removed from the simplicity of the rest. While it does have explosive sequences, good character moments and terrific terrific animation, a huge step up from the plasticky look of the previous two, it's sadly lacking the heart, soul and development of particularly the second, trading touching depth for shallow comedic situations. 4. Rise of the Guardians Pairing up a selection of legends into a kind of super team, it's easily one of DreamWorks' most fantastical and original movies. There is a lot to really enjoy here, from the enchanting magical elements to the exciting action set pieces and the wonderful characters. Most notably, Hugh Jackman's spectacular and very Aussie Easter Bunny, who is an instant favourite. The entire voice cast assembled here is in fact stellar, bringing wonderful new takes to beloved mythical heroes. Unfortunately, it is a touch too long and ends up with a quasi-generic predictable finale. However, it's overall an enormous surprise, sporting brilliant imagination, effervescent wonder, striking visuals, lots of great laughs, and a beautiful soul. 3. The Croods with this prehistoric journey, DreamWorks tackles an era that has been explored to death in animation, but manages to create a unique and exciting adventure that doesn't tread on too much of what came before. While stylized and highly fantasized, The Croods manages to avoid many comparisons with The Flintstones by keeping out contemporary elements and simply relying on observational gags and set pieces. Visualization is incredible, with tremendous colors and landscapes and fantastic character and creature design. While there's nothing entirely exciting about the story, it's still a heartwarming and often funny escapade, with a team of characters whose plight you grow to care deeply about over its course. 2. Kung Fu Panda 2 Doubling the awesomeness of the first, Kung Fu Panda 2 makes brilliant use of the tried and tested DreamWorks sequel formula. Stakes are bigger, action is more explosive, villains are more terrifying, and character exploration is deeper. Diving further into the lore and fleshing out the backstory of Poe and his destiny, the film moves into dark and dramatic areas, making for an emotionally loaded and satisfying picture. While the humour isn't up to par, with the first, there's very little of it here at all, the movie's offering of heart truly makes up for it. As visually superb as the first, I adore the integration of traditional animation styles. And coming in as my number one of DreamWorks' third era, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Grander, more epic and more explosive, it lives up to the enormous expectations left after the first, somehow managing to expand its scope and scale. It exceptionally expands the mythos and lore of this world, bringing in new faces, concepts and obstacles, and allowing characters some impeccable development. They are challenged, broken and born anew. Regardless, Dragon 2 packs an added punch of emotion, expanding on the themes of family, togetherness and experience acceptance. Though none of this quite matches the wonderful relationship studies of the first, it's perhaps more heartwarming and heartbreaking at times. It also delves into some incredibly dark territory, taking a few twisted turns that might be just a touch too dark for a DreamWorks flick. Regardless, it's an overall hopeful, optimistic and poignant film. 
And at that, I'm throwing it over to you. I want to know what is your favourite DreamWorks movie of their third era? Or what is your own personal ranking? Fire away with those down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out more DreamWorks and animation rankings, you can find them on your screen. Thanks for watching. Thank you.